Hey, Chris Williams here. So have you ever noticed that on your team, um, with your organization, there's some typical bad habits that you have? And sometimes they're a little bit annoying, right? You know the habits, the ones that no one talks about, but um, it's kind of a part of the work, so no one really says anything about, but it causes you to lose a lot of energy, uh, sometimes very distracting even. And so what I wanna do is I wanna offer you some really good questions to ask in order to kind of dig out bad habits that you have on your team. So the first question I wanna ask is, you know, are we being busy or are we being productive? You know, so there's a lot of times where in the busyness of working on a particular initiative, or maybe you're working on that new deal, or maybe you're really trying to get focused on several different pieces that all are very, very important. One of the biggest things we forget is that sometimes a lot of the to-do stuff is really just a busy work and it's not really the productive things. For example, have you ever had a meeting after the meeting? <laughs> you know, so you sat in a meeting, you've talked about the plan or you've given the status reports and the updates and all the different things, and then someone pulls you to the side right after the meeting. And now you're gonna have another 30, 45 minutes, hour conversation about the meeting after the meeting. That's just being busy. Um, or, you know, there's a ton of emails to get back to, but you know, you get pulled into something else or these other items that really are important and your emails are piling up and you don't know really kind of where to focus at. And so I'm just saying, think about your everyday, think about the work that you're really doing. Even think about, well, you know, maybe um, we should have an agenda in our meeting and everyone should get a copy of that agenda prior to the meeting. And some people should have the option to be able to opt in or opt out of a meeting. And that's not to say that if it's an important meeting that if you need everyone there, they're not there. But what I am saying is, is that uh, I've been in situations in my corporate work where you know, you go through an entire day of like six or seven meetings back to back to back to back to back and eat work through lunch um, on a meeting. And then by the time you look up, it's five o'clock, you've got nothing done, right? And so I just want us to think about some of the busy work that we actually have going on. And is it truly us being productive? Are we focused on the things we should be focused on? I have a great friend that always says, keep the main thing, the main thing. And so are you keeping the main thing, the main thing? And are you finding ways to either delegate or consolidate the other things that sometimes are just in the way? Um, my favorite is the meeting after the meeting and, and, and those conversations because you don't realize how much pro productivity time you're losing by having those after meeting conversations. Um, and, and those typically are not about the meeting. They might be to complain. Um, they may be of different things that are not necessarily uh, productive conversation and, and forward moving uh, conversation. But I would also highly encourage you, put an agenda together, send it out before even scheduling a meeting. Give people time to give you feedback on what the actual outcome of the conversation should be. And that will probably even eliminate the meeting altogether. Number two, number two is pretty interesting and it's a question that I think sometimes we need to ask ourselves when it comes to building great talent, uh, bringing on new talent onto our teams and inside of our organization, or how we even look at the entire scale of going about finding great talent and to begin with. And here's the question, do we have unrealistic expectations? I think if we're gonna start uh, digging ourselves out of bad habits, one of the things that we have to do is we gotta start looking at from a hiring perspective or even the people who are currently on our team. Do we have unrealistic expectations? I mean, it sometimes feels like that we want people to know everything prior to them coming on our team. We make people feel like they have to have this laundry list of understanding before they can step to our team. They have to have 55 different skills before they're allowed 
to come be a part and help contribute to whatever it is that we're doing. And unfortunately, um, more people are finding out that that's always not the case. I mean, let's just be honest. How many of us have gotten hired in a role only to go through, you know, 90 days or however long it took of training uh, anyway? So it's not necessarily the things that we say in job descriptions or how we even make people feel who are currently on our team. I mean, think about the person who may have been hired in the last year or so or the last two years. You know, are we being mindful of actually giving that person the time and investment of attention that is needed in order to help build their skills? Because a lot of times it's not even about the skill. It's not about can they do the work? It's about how we treat people when they come on a team. We bring them into fast paced, chaotic situations. We want them to produce right out the gate. We don't give people time to ramp up or the curve is so steep that it's almost unrealistic. And the truth of the matter is, you're the leader. Do you realize how long it took you to get to where you got? And so I think we have to learn to be just a tad bit more mindful about how is it that we approach people on our team? How, how do we look at you know, what we provide to people? Do we give time for training? Do we give time for feedback from those people? And most importantly, are the expectations that we're setting out there that are unsaid felt by people every single day? And so I want you to think about the next meeting that you may have. I want you to think about that the next time you uh, come across a opportunity to share new information or present a new initiative, or you think about what is it that I'm saying and how is that making people feel because they create really bad habits. If people feel like I've got to have all of this ready to go, I got to know everything, then guess what? You'll never have any vulnerability and trust on the team. Because if you make people feel like I have to know it all, I, I need to know every single thing. I need to learn, I need to know every little thing about this SQL report or this you know, uh, big data, or I have to know all of this information in order to be effective. Well then, when does someone get a chance to make a mistake on your team? How do we treat people if they make a mistake? How do we make people feel when we make them, you know, feel like that? How do how do they know they can actually ask a question? Because everybody around them makes them feel like I have to know everything. So I really want you to think about that because these unrealistic expectations create really bad habits that aren't really helpful for your ultimate goal. Number three, the real question here is, is are we listening to those around us? Um, sometimes bad habits are blind spots for us. Sometimes bad habits are the thing that we cannot see, not because we're, we're just missing it or we're aloof or we don't want to pay attention. Sometimes those bad habits are just kind of things that are already in us. Um, if you think about your team, there's a culture that's already built. And so sometimes whatever the, the, the outcome of that culture is, is something that takes an outside voice. It takes um, your customer coming back and giving you some feedback on a particular practice that maybe they saw. Um, it takes listening to people further down in your organization who typically, honestly, don't have a, a relationship to you. They're not tied to anything that you do, um, but they might care about the organization and the company. So I really wanna encourage you today to truly think about are we really listening? And listening does not mean that, oh, I heard you and I just run off and I continue to do what I do. Um, sometimes listening is even seeing how things turn out. If you think about maybe um, every time we get to this point in a particular project, things fall to the crack. Or maybe every time we've tried this way, when we started an initiative, for some reason it doesn't take. Or you know, maybe we went down this path and this is what we were working on and everything works up until we get to this part in the project. That's a pattern. And so sometimes you might have to stop and say, maybe what the result we're getting is what we need to listen to. Maybe not trying to force it all the time, but really stop and pause and say, you know, I think there's something here that it's trying to teach us in the moment 
as to why we may not be getting the particular result or the team may not be as open to this particular change or whatever the case may be. So I, I really want you to stop and think, are we truly listening? And what does listening look and feel like? Because listening is a two way street. Listening is not only taking in feedback, but how are you responding to that feedback once you get it? Um, do you, you know, just take it and continue down the same path? Do you make people feel bad for giving you that feedback? Um, do people feel comfortable to walk into your office or provide you information by email or be able to grab 10 minutes with you to talk about things that they're noticing? Are you open to that? Because if we're not open to that, well then we can't be mad at the results we're getting. Some things, yes, you will catch because you're the leader and you're the person in charge, whether it's a mother at home or whether it's, you know, a, a woman who's running a successful company or whether it's a guy who's running a successful company. No matter where you are in life, there are certain things that you will just be able to naturally see. There are other things, though, that we will learn best by the wisdom of those around us. And so I just want to challenge you today and think about, are you truly listening to those around you? So when you stop and ask these questions, do we have unrealistic expectations? Are we busy or are we being productive? Are we listening to those around us? When you stop and truly ask those types of questions, I believe it will help point the way forward for you. Hey, did you like that video? I hope you did. If you did, please leave comments down below. Tell me what you thought about it. Tell me what stood out to you. More importantly, if you would and want more information about this and other things that I talk about, or you want to submit different ideas, please feel free to email me at chris at thechristopherwilliams.com. Also subscribe below so that you can continue to get weekly content like this. And I hope that you make forward progress the most important part to your day. Take care.